my name is Don Cameron, and I'm General Manager and Vice President of Terranova Ranch. We're located about 30 miles southwest of Fresno, and uh, Terranova's been uh, in existence since uh, 1979, and I have been here since 1981, over 40 years. So Terranova consists of, uh, when you add everything together, close to 9,000 acres. We have a real wide variety of crops here, from almonds, walnuts, pistachios, wine grapes, to a lot of the row crops, uh, fresh onions, dehydrator onions, carrots, processing tomatoes, uh, a lot of different seed crops, pretty much everything, uh, everything you can grow we have tried at one time or another here. These hedgerows were planted uh, actually less than two years ago. They've really been phenomenal with the growth we've seen here. And the reason we did it, one, we had real issues with the, the banks along this levee. Um, every time we'd have a rain, they would you'd get all kinds of water erosion and we'd have to go back and rebuild. Uh, but really the other reason was we wanted to see if we could add some diversity, some beauty, some texture to the ranch. It's great to come through here and see the flowers blooming. We're seeing all kinds of new wildlife that we have not seen in the past. We have hummingbirds out here constantly throughout the summer, which were really a rare sight. We've got milkweed mixed in through here. And in the last couple of weeks, I've actually seen uh, monarch butterflies coming through our area here and visiting these plants. We build it and they, they really have come. I mean, the pollinators are really intense out here. The seed crops that we grow, we rely on bees. And we've found um, that we have been able to not bring additional bees in uh, on, on several of our crops that we've grown. Um, we know that we're building up uh, the native pollinators here. I mean, we've seen things that I probably never have seen out here before. We have bumblebees visiting. We have uh, just a real wide variety of pollinators, including regular honeybees. I mean, when there's no other food around, every bee for miles will come here and, uh, and feed. We do have pollen and nectar throughout the uh, summer and the winter. We have plants that have different blooming periods so that we don't just have one quick bloom and we're done. These are spaced out like the elderberry. I mean, it's still got bloom on it right now. And we've got other plants that uh, continue to bloom throughout the year. As they're growing now, they are beginning to, to turn into windbreaks. Uh, you know, we also put valley oaks in our hedgerow here. So, you know, in 10, 15 years, you're gonna see big oak trees all really all along this area here too. We have a lot of different operations nearby and it's nice, this gives us a buffer and, and it's beautiful to see. Plus the birds we're, we're finding in the evenings, the birds come here to roost, you know, they feel safe. So uh, really a lot of changes from what we had before. And they're all positive changes, so, you know, that's why we want to do more. We have about two and a half miles planted now with hopes of putting in another four and a half miles. We've uh, taken care of the erosion problem. We've added really a lot of beauty and a lot of diversity to the, uh, to the farm. You know, I think our biggest problem uh, has been the weed control and we've become we, we were very intense uh, in taking care of this after we planted because we knew that the weed were gonna be a tough problem here. So we actually put crews through here about every three weeks to keep the weeds clean so the plants could survive and get ahead of the weeds. And then we came back and put a mulch down around all the plants uh, during the summer uh, consisting of, of really chipped almond trees. So we were able to help cover the ground, conserve moisture, and prevent weeds by putting that here, and um, the plants just love it. I think the real key to this is we put drip irrigation here. Water is absolutely critical. It really doesn't use much water, and as they become more established, we'll probably cut back. You know, my belief has always been plant small plants. You know, if you plant a smaller tree, um, you get away from any root-bound issues, and you, you put it out there and it can survive, I think, a lot better. 
You really need to watch them when they're young and take care of them. Sounds simple, we do that every day in our field crops, but to actually think about this as something you really need to pay attention to is important if you want to be successful with it. You can't, you can't just plant it and walk away and hope it grows. Uh, the irrigation, the timely irrigation is key, especially when they're young. And now they've, uh, they're just thriving, so. so. So one of the other issues that you have to be concerned with, you don't wanna have a spray rig come through here when you do need to treat your crop, your trees, your vines, whatever you have planted nearby, you need to turn off before you get to the end of the field and then make sure you don't have any drift going toward any of your plants uh, because you want your pollinators to be healthy. You don't want them, you don't want to kill the, the pollinators you're attracting. And if it's not safe to spray, put it off for a day. Food safety is always an issue and it's always a, you know, kind of a fight between food safety and, and having you know, a hedgerow or having native habitat because you have to worry about um, keeping your crop clean. Uh, so far, we haven't had any issues. We started this with a, with a small grant from uh, the Healthy Soils Initiative from the CDFA program. You know, as farmers, we are stewards of the land. We care about what we do. I live here. And I like it when I go out for a walk and I see what we've done. It's pretty impressive, you know, to, uh, to see you can, you can make change. We want the farm to be here long term. And to be here long term, you need to be sustainable. You need to be financially sustainable, but you also need to be doing things that are going to be helping the land, helping the environment, and, uh, and producing food in a really high quality manner.